My name is uh, Björn Brücher. I'm working for Intel as a senior software engineer, um, tech lead for autonomous driving. So looks like uh, we have already quite a mobile app, machine learning uh, as well. And uh, um, what everybody is looking for is, is definitely uh, performance. Um, I got also informed uh, to, uh, to do this talk uh, on short notice. Um, so you can expect everything, but not um, closing on time. Um, so I was slightly overrun. I hope you forgive me. It's hard for me to squeeze uh, 20 years of software optimization experience into, t in, into 10 minutes. Uh, I give my best. Um, I just want to give you some, <laughs> some teasers. Uh, and probably, um, yeah, flip forward here and there. Hope you forgive me. Why are we doing uh, multi-threading? I think most of you um, are interested in the topic uh, to squeeze out um, each notch uh, on performance, right? So uh, what it is about is uh, getting most performance out of your platform, useful capabilities uh, of the Intel hardware. I hope there is no one else from, from any other platform here. Um, to actually, best case, leave no performance on the table. Small agenda for this talk. We will touch on benchmark. Uh, we will touch on software optimization, um, software performance optimization, which is more the, um, the main piece, uh, I would say, in this talk. Um, then we'll look at uh, um, a few uh, analysis tools uh, we are using. Um, it's a little bit of marketing, forgive me here. I'm not selling, so don't ask me for price information. Um, but uh, I'd like you uh, probably later on and take that home and um, and give it a try, and then conclude. Okay, benchmarking, a quick one. Um, when I talk to to folks uh, on software optimization, um, we often first have to figure out and what to look at. So when you have your, obliga your application, right, it, um, there's probably one or multiple pieces inside your application, uh, which we call kernel. So your main interest um, piece of code uh, for software optimization. And then you have uh, pre-processing steps and post-processing step, steps, uh, which you do not care. What you need to agree on first is what, I, what is actually my, my kernel? What is my, my main function uh, of interest? Um, it sounds easy, um, but it's actually not. And the, the deeper you dive into that, you will figure out. Your workload has to be relevant. It has to be repeatable. And that has to be consistent. Um, easy set, hard to do. <coughs> um, then we talk about uh, metrics. What do you actually want to measure? Right. Uh, so if you're in the gaming industry, probably more towards um, FPS, frames per second. If you're in HPC, and then it comes uh, quite often to, uh, to flops, uh, floating point operations per second. Um, there are also other uh, measurements. You can do CPI, um, clocks per instructions, uh, we, you want to compare. Um, but whenever you um, do some measurements, um, right? Um, you have a device actually doing that, and this is also influencing your measurements itself. And then comes the fun part: um, Excel, right? So you have all your data; you are going to present it. Um, benchmarks have to be run multiple times. I think this is this is clear for statistical uh, relevance. You need to have minimum. You need to have maximum. There is an average uh, you build. You guys know that there is an arithmetic one, a geo mean, and a mean one, and I hope you know the difference. And then you get some statistical information on top uh, to justify um, your results and, and correctly measuring deviation, distribution, things like that. Um, what I've listed here in bold, um, which is to me quite obvious, but not to the audience quite often, is to run your benchmark on the target platform and not on your development platform, not onto a simulator or anything else. And then go ahead, document what you actually did um, on the hardware side as well as on the software side. And keep in mind that benchmarking does not mean you do a functional validation. It can extend your validation, right? But benchmarking is in principle not functional validation. 
Software performance optimization is my main topic. Um, there are actually three vectors uh, I want to talk to. One I'm going to skip because we have a prof professional speaker on that, which is multi-threading. But there are three vectors you keep in mind. So it, uh, whenever you talk about performance, these three things uh, need to be in, in your mind. So one is frequency, second is vectorization, and the third one is multi-threading when you're doing software optimization on a CPU. When talking about frequency, in the old days, Probably everybody who is older than me, there's no one in the room, I guess, besides besides my colleague, he's slightly more experienced than I. Um, we are facing physical limitations uh, when designing um, a microprocessor, um, and that is challenging us as a software uh, developer. Power consumption goes exponential uh, with the frequency. Exp exponential problems um, are hard to solve. Right, and these pro uh, this problem is, um, or this this frequency is limited by um, TJ Max, which means this is the temperature of the die. If you go beyond 100 degrees, you're simply melting it. Don't call me; I'm not going to replace your processor. Right? Performance on modern processors do no longer scale with frequency. Uh, we all know, um, right? If you double the frequency, you will not double the, the performance at all. And um, heterogeneous processes, um, they start, uh, they start, uh, they share the, the terminal design point, um, which means if you have a, a processor having multiple things on, on die as well, like this notebook for, insta for instance with integrated graphics, all right, you have to balance. Um, there's one TDB, TDP, and this is shared. This is shared across the integrated graphics it's, um, and the CPU, uh, you cannot get max performance on each of them at the same time. Um, to make that a little bit more complicated, um, there's more on the processor. There's the CPU, there's the, and there's the, the integrated graphics, there's the cache, there's I.O., there's memory, uh, there's memory controller, all are running at different uh, frequencies. And to make it even more complex, there's dynamic. So it's changing over time. Um, and this is what I want to relate to, to the first section I was talking about, benchmarking. When you have dynamics and frequency, right, how do you expect um, stable results? So make sure they align, they are running at fixed frequency. Whenever you're, you're doing benchmarking, whenever you're starting to do software optimization, as you need to have a baseline, and this is what you need to do first. Um, Handling these different uh, frequencies is quite um, challenging, and so we spent uh, a dedicated controller actually doing that. There are plenty of um, uh, sensors uh, on the die uh, measuring the temperature, uh, and we have a dedicated power uh, control unit uh, managing the frequencies. And on top there is the operating system, also want to have some influence um, on the power. And that is called, uh, yeah, as set on this, uh, this slide here, uh, turbo, uh, the Turbo Boost um, technology. So when you ever buy a, 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 an Intel process, there is a stamp on it, um, and uh, that stamp says uh, this process is running at this or that frequency. When you look at marketing papers, they quite often call out the, uh, the max turbo speed, uh, which is currently up to five, uh, five gigahertz, right? But the sustained and guaranteed uh, frequency um, of this top-notch gaming uh, processor is around uh, 3.6 uh, gigahertz, right? Not five. This is what, you, what can be sustained. Um, and if there is some, some additional headroom on the temperature side, um, right, uh, the operating system gives up um, to, the, um, to the power control unit uh, on the hardware, um, and then we run into uh, the turbo mode. Um, if the US controls power, right, then it has the, um, the option to reduce power consum consumption to be more conservative um, for the environment. What's happening if you're um, if you if you're running in Turbo Boost? So I think I cannot leave the microphone here. Um, but uh, um, when you start with your application um, at um, C6 uh, level here, 
So that means um, system is, is totally idle, right? Then and the new application is starting um, and uh, it runs it um, at base frequency, right? In, as in the old times. So we are at P1 uh, power level. Um, and it, then it runs there forever. The red curve um, shows the, uh, the temperature. And what you can expect is that the temperature um, is increasing over time. And what you leave on the table is actually these, uh, this yellow area. Um, at the beginning, there is quite some headroom of unused thermal capacity. And this is what we want to use. Um, and what we are doing there uh, is we are increasing um, the frequency, which means um, we are consuming more power. And of course, the voltage reg the regulators on the motherboard, they have to provide that. So we pull the curve, the red curve, uh, more, um, more into the, the, the yellow area and get some extra uh, boost of performance. And at some time later, uh, we have to reduce the, the, the frequency to not melt uh, the processor. So if you play that um, for over quite some uh, over uh, for for over quite some time, right? You start at P zero level, so in turbo mode, uh, right? You know, temperature increases, right? And then you need to and uh, to reduce it uh, actually to not go beyond the TJ max uh, anymore. And um, if the system is still hot, um, burning too much energy, and the temperature is going up, then the operating system is taking over, uh, reducing the frequency. Um, even more until we can go up um, further to to stay at the uh, at the P1 um, guaranteed uh, frequency. Let's make it even more complex. Uh, modern processors have more than just one core, and you have two of on each. Um, if you have single-threaded workload, um, you have quite some some turbo boost headroom. Uh, multiple bins of uh, frequency you can add on top. If you have lightly threaded uh, workload, um, you spread that uh, power envelope um, across two um, uh, processors or, or cores um, here. Um, and if you ha have a highly threaded workload, there might still be some uh, headroom uh, for uh, any kind of turbo, um, but of course it's, it's less, right? Any key takeaways? Yeah. Okay, second one is vectorization, as we talked about. This is probably um, some of you, I hope most of you are familiar, uh, familiar with. Um, so there are two different sets of instructions on a modern processor, and this is across the board. There are Scala um, operations as well as uh, vector, inst uh, vector instructions. And what it's actually doing is it's either operating on to, to the left here on the X and Y on a single data, uh, each doing some operation, let's say a plus, right? You do an addition and you get one uh, one uh, one result in there. If you do vectorized, uh, you're doing one instruction, but you're doing that on multiple data at the same time. Uh, what you receive is multiple results, uh, right? Think of uh, um, any workload in the graphics area, for instance, uh, in uh, matrix operations, uh, right, where you can, if you modify the, the data layout properly, right, you can take advantage of that. Um, and the fun thing is, and, and what it gives back to you is, um, you have the same, almost the same um, number of cycles you are, you're wasting, but you can use uh, them on much more data, so you can do, you can operate uh, way more, way more data there. There are different uh, vector sizes, um, and so for SSE um, and yeah, back how long? 15 years, I guess it's back, right? 128 bit, um, and nowadays we have a vector length of uh, 512 bit, which uh, gives you the advantage of uh, operating on 16 floating point operations at the same time. Great. Um, yeah, and the small difference, um, if you if you want to check um, if you're actually uh, operating in vector mode or in, uh, in Scala mode is the assembly operation where is either uh, an S, this is uh, listed here as a, 
as a bold S, or on the right side um, you have that P, which stands for, for parallel. And this is just an indicator for you if you're running multi-thread, if you're running uh, vectorized um, or not. Um, we went through this, so let's not touch that. Um, the um, AVX512 um, ve vector registers, right? At least these are huge ones, right? Um, and we have uh, plenty of them in a processor. And if you compare that to previous implementation of normal AVX uh, to be backward compatible, right, or SSE, um, we are not duplicating it. So we are taking po a portion of uh, of AVX or AVX 5.12 and take advantage of that. Implementing registers is uh, very uh, cost intensive, and um, um, so uh, we are not duplicating it. Um, we are making sure that uh, this uh, this architecture is also backward um, compatible. What I'd like to point out here is when you do vectorization, right, ensure that your cache aligned and that your memory is aligned uh, to the cache um, as only this, um, in, in this situation, the, um, the compiler can take advantage of that and can vectorize your code. Now make sure that your compiler understands that you're vectorizing, um, right? Check back if the compiler is actually doing that, instrument the code. Um, properly to ensure to get the performance. Multi-threading. There's a blank page. Anthony is going to cover that. Uh, and with that, it leads me to uh, a set of tools um, I'd like you to keep in mind uh, when you do software optimization work. Um, and the first one is for more or less lazy guys, and so it's only Windows. Um, it's the extreme tuning utility, and uh, the the reason I'm using it is uh, if a system is remote, right, and I want to change uh, frequencies, multipliers of the processors. Uh, so as an optimization guy, you should be um, you should be um, capable um, of uh, modifying the BIOS and fully understand the BIOS and what's going on, right? Um, for software optimization, you also want to uh, change the, the power behavior there um, in the operating system as well as in the BIOS. So this is very important to set the baseline, right? And when you switch back to normal behavior, right, get the free turbo on top, uh, you're absolutely fine, right? But when it comes to software optimization, a fuse, so we are, we are saying fusing uh, the frequency um, to a const um, frequency. And with that application, you can do that remotely um, uh, from the GUI. Fun beast, as you also can um, generate uh, different configurations, um, save them, and then check the behavior. Second tool um, is uh, the Intel VTune amplifier, which is uh, our yeah, bread and butter tool when it comes to performance. Um, it's a bread and butter tool uh, for uh, Intel processors. Um, it is uh, root causing hotspots. It's uh, finding the hotspot, the, the, the piece of code which takes uh, most of your cycles. Um, and you can drill down and down to through all the, uh, the functions you're using, uh, down to the assembly level, and then uh, and getting the insights where you actually bound. Um, and also inside the micro, micro architecture, what's actually blo uh, blocking you uh, from uh, getting more performance. Um, of course, uh, multi-threading multi -threading, um, capabilities are also implemented, uh, and you will get that information as well. Uh, we probably might want to see later on also um, some info on that. Uh, the third tool is um, the Intel Advisor uh, one. Um, okay, if, you, if you're using VTune, right, it shows uh, where you spend most of the cycles, but that's, that does not show you um, what the headroom is, right? Where do you, uh, where, where's your, your, your limit of your current machine? And that's the tool uh, actually helping. And the reason I took this uh, slide also is uh, because it shows, uh, um, it shows the performance uh, going from serial code to vectorized code, threading, and then the combination uh, of threading uh, and vectorization. I want to say that the vectorization is the easier way um, to optimize your code. Uh, and I would start with that um, and then immediately go 
on to to threaded code uh, as modern processors, especially on the server side. Um, so I have a build build system I'm using with 48 cores. Uh, means means uh, 96 uh, hardware threads. Um, so this is quite amazing um, what you can do there. Um, the second slide on, on this tool um, is actually showing you uh, the upper limit. And, it, and the analysis is called uh, roof line analysis um, with, the, um, with the lines um, on the graph there, which is showing you um, if you're compute bound or memory bound. Uh, most of the algorithms are memory bound, uh, even though you think, hey, I'm compute bound, you're not. Most likely not, and depends on the um, on the data pattern um, you're using. What we have on the y-axis is uh, um, the performance in terms of gigaflops, and on the x-axis we have um, yeah something like um, like a metric for for density for data density. Um, and here you can check if you're um, if you're more memory bound or um, compute bound. Um, and the lines there show you um, to what level or what memory level in the hierarchy, memory hierarchy, you are actually at. Um, are, you, are you last level cache bound, uh, right? If you know that, then you need to think about, okay, what is about my uh, L1, L2 uh, cache performance and do speci specific tweaks uh, for level one, level two um, performance. Yeah, the last one um, is uh, the Intel Inspector. This is uh, something when you go multi-threading. Um, it detects memory leaks, um, data corruption, uh, data raises and deadlocks. Why this is important? You can do so many mistakes there not knowing that. Um, and I guess we will run into that in, in the next uh, um, presentation also. What to take care of, especially if you're, f if you're new in that business. Um, right, take the advantage of tools uh, to ensure that you're coding correctly. Um, and it's a, it's a nightmare if you cannot uh, verify the customer's problem on your mis on your system because it's slightly different. They're running at different temperature than the one at your customer side. Um, so um, ensure that your code is correct uh, when doing multi-threading. Let me conclude. <coughs> I want to take. I want to. Um, I want you to, to take uh, three things away here. First is on benchmarking, right? Really take time um, to figure out what you want to benchmark, what you want to optimize, and how to do that correct, right? Um, think about your system configuration, that it's running stable. Think about um, repeatability, consistency there. When you talk about performance um, improvements and how to do that, keep three things in mind. First is on um, frequency, the second is on vectorization, and the third one, uh, multi-threading. Um, take advantage of um, analysis uh, tools you, might can, you, you can get. Um, implement them and take advantage of them, use them at the beginning um, to ensure um, that you make steady progress. So this is how we suggest to get most of performance uh, out of your system and use the capabilities of the underlying hardware. I want to conclude with that. Um, any questions we want to push to the end and I'm happy to take them then. Uh, and there's also my colleague Hubert somewhere around here um, who will also uh, help on questions you might have. Thanks.